she'd seen it. Well, uh, some day Adventists were thought of as rather crazy, even by mainstream Christians at that time. They were, they were weirdos. Just the fact that they have a prophet means, well, they're heretics. And so they were not widely accepted. Uh, something very peculiar happened in that Ellen White had a, a disciple, uh, this fellow George McCready Price, who started pushing this idea. He said, you know, that they're making fun of you, but we have all this information. You know, Ellen White told us exactly what it was, that the earth was created exactly seven days, 6,000 years ago. And he's pushing on this and pushing on it, and he's, he, he sort of develops a splinter of creationists. And he fosters this for many, many years. Uh, his secret to success was living a very long life. He made it into like his 90s, so he's, he's living here forever. And he's constantly hammering on people and telling them over and over again, the earth is seven days old, it was created 6,000 years ago. And uh, this is one of the nice things about religion. All you gotta do is repeat it often enough and somebody will believe it. And that's what happened, is that over these years, uh, the dominant form of creationism became a fairly literal version that was saying, yeah, the Earth was created 6,000 years ago. George McCready Price had training as a geologist, and his answer to everything was to say the flood did it. <laughs> so, you know, that what was going on, you know, when you look at the, at the, the Grand Canyon, for instance, how was the Grand Canyon for? Well, the flood did it. Uh, how were mountains thrown up? Well, that was the flood. You know, all these catastrophes were going on. In, and uh, he, so he was doing this sort of pseudo-geology to explain everything. Uh, and this got picked up by many of the creationists who saw this as a rationale for many of their beliefs. Is that they could do this kind of weird geology where they go out and explain everything in terms of the Bible and publish it. And they wrote a book called, uh, this is Whitcomb and Morris, they wrote a book called The Genesis Flood in 1961, which anyone who's diligent about researching creationists should have on their bookshelf because that is the seminal document in the creationist movement. Back here in the early years, they're not literal. They're fairly generous in their interpretation. They, they're willing to view the Bible as metaphorical. By the time 1961 rolls around, uh, things have hardened to the point where they're saying, no, it's, it's a literal truth that the Earth is only 6,000 years old. And here's our contrived scientific, pseudo-scientific evidence to explain it. And so that book is really influential. If you want to talk about creationism, you have to realize that, that, that the modern form of creationism is only about 50 years old. When they sit there and they try to tell you that they have, they're, they're using the ancient wisdom of the Bible and that their movement is thousands of years old, uh, they're lying to you. It's not true. It's actually a fairly recent development, this kind of creationism that we're working with now. Uh, nowadays, what you find is after that Edwards versus Aguilar decision, there was a further hardening where now there is a, a movement that I'll talk about in a little bit more detail, which takes the book of Genesis extremely literally. Uh, this is the work of people like Ken Ham of Answers in Genesis with the Fancy Creation Museum in Kentucky, uh, where he, he again is saying this same thing. The world is 6,000 years old. The flood was in precisely 2,348 BC. He knows this for a fact. And if you disagree with him, you are a heretic who will burn in hell. And this has become the dominant form of creationism in the United States. Which is, again, very peculiar because that was the form that was promulgated by Ellen White, uh, the Seventh-day Adventists. And so what you've got is a whole bunch of Baptists and Episcopalians and Presbyterians and all these other faiths in the United States. And they are all adhering to the doc doctrines of a 19th century prophet very straight, and they're just not aware of it. Because it's all been, it's all been uh, filtered through the Genesis flood, that book right there, which neatly omitted any mention of prophecy in their reasoning. Okay, so how do people explain all this stuff that's going on in the book of Genesis? And there are a couple of, of models for reconciling science and religion that were popular for a fairly long period of time. Uh, and I'll mention these, these three different explanations right here. Uh, one is called the gap theory. If you go back to the early years of the 19th century, this was the one. This was what everybody was saying. And that's because this particular theory was written up and included in an annotated Bible called the Schofield Reference Bible, which was the Bible of the fundamentalist movements. Uh, the gap theory is, is really cute. Because what it is, is they said, OK, if you go to the book of Genesis and you read the first, uh, the first sentence there, it's in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That's Genesis 1.1. 1, 1.
Genesis 1 2 is, and the earth was out without form and void, and darkness upon the face of the deep. And they say there was a gap between the first sentence and the second sentence. That the Bible is accurate, except it doesn't, obviously, it's not long enough to explain everything. And so in between that, that period and the letter A was billions of years. And it's all just not written down in the Bible. And there are some really dramatic stories that are told about this. Um, the, the, there's this whole idea that this is when the war between the angels and the devil occurred. <laughs> and what they say in those billions of years here, that's when the geology was done. That's when the Grand Canyon was formed. That's when the mountains were raised. That's when the oceans were, were created in their present form. And it was all because of this, this cataclysmic war between devils and angels all over the surface of the earth. And it just wasn't interesting enough to make it into the Bible. <laughs> Which is really sad because I think Michael Bay could turn this into a really good action movie. <laughs> so anyway, that's the explanation. Okay. And, and actually, this is, this is a fairly good explanation in terms of reconciling science and religion. Because they're just saying, well, look, the Bible is, is, a, is a book that we use in our religion, but it's not a science textbook that explains everything. And we're saying, okay, here's, here's what we're saying. We're saying, in this little gap right here, that's where all the science goes. <laughs> and it's just not covered by the Bible. Which is okay. We could actually live with that fairly well. Because then they wouldn't be arguing with us about evolution and all this other stuff. We'd be saying, okay, we'll throw this into the gap. Good for you. But of course, the Bible doesn't say anything about the Garden of Eden, which is a later event in the history of humankind. Uh, so like I said, this was very popular for a while. But again, it, as, as, as I did myself just here, it's really easy to make fun of me. Uh, so it, it hasn't lasted very well. There are some fundamentals around us to adhere to this, but not very many. Uh, the other one that, that you hear most often is the, this one called the day-age theory, which says you look at the book of Genesis and there's, there's these seven days, and you can look at what was created on each of these days, and so waters above, fruit trees, sun and stars, etc., etc. Uh, you can look at these and you can say, okay, well, it's metaphorical. Those, those days are not 24-hour days, they're ages. This doesn't work very well because it turns out the description does not line up at all well with anything in geology. It doesn't, just doesn't fit. And it's also got these peculiarities like fruit trees being created on day three, uh, the day before the sun was created. <laughs> <laughs> and again, you know, if you think, well, we're going to say it's, it's millions of years in a single day, uh, you still got this problem with all these fruit trees sitting around waiting. <laughs> now, it, it, so it doesn't fit. Now, the thing is, uh, these, these, this slide and the last one, these were not put out by scientists. They are put out by creationist organizations. If you get on the web and search around for various creationist sites, what you'll find is something going into great detail about why this other sex interpretation of the Bible is wrong. And you will find them readily shooting down the day-age theory and readily shooting down the gap theory. Scientists don't even have to do that. What you most often find when you get on the internet and start looking for creation as resources, though, is, is this idea. This is from an organization called Answers in Genesis, which is the big one. This is the major creation institute in the United States. Uh, it was founded by Ken Ham who was from Australia, which is very convenient because uh, we can blame Australia for many of our woes. Uh, Ken Ham, has, he's uh, kind of an unscrupulous businessman who is very, very good at what he does. He's kind of the P.T. Barnum of our age. Uh, and he's been making money hand over fist. He's built this gigantic museum in, Kent, in Kentucky, which I visited. I'll show you some pictures from this museum. Uh, the key <coughs> doctrinal point in all of Answers in Genesis is literature is opposition to evolution and an insistent, insistence on an absolute literalist interpretation of the Bible. He's very firm on this point. The earth was created in 4004 BC. And it was created in, in exactly six days, and on that seventh day, God did take a break. And that's the truth. You've got to believe this. Uh, this is a cartoon from his website uh, where the happy, smiling fundamentalist on the left is reading through the Bible, and he says, oh, when he reaches the word day, he says, yes, according to the language and context, day is a regular day, meaning it was 24 hours. You cannot disagree with him on this point. The Bible says day, therefore day. No metaphor is allowed. Uh, the scowling guy over here who's having all the problems is, is one of these theistic evolutionists who's willing to say that maybe a day was millions of years to God, etc. 
so he has to go through and scratch out things. It says millions of years is true. A day can't be a regular day. And he's the bad guy. 